Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about cells. This is a very quick little review sheet. I promised a review series. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being patient. I am on it right now. So cells, that's what we're talking about today. Go ahead and take this opportunity to screenshot this if you would like to. I don't have PDF versions of this. So you can just go ahead and screenshot right now, right here. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let's talk about some cells. Cells basics. First of all, cells are the basic unit of life. They are the smallest unit of life and they are the smallest level of organization in biology. That is, of course, atoms and molecules are smaller, but when we're dealing with biology, we're dealing with things that are alive. A cell is the smallest thing that can be considered alive and they are the basic unit of all life. They are required to be considered biotic. So it needs to be, something needs to be made of cells in order to be considered alive. That makes sense because if the cell is the smallest unit of life, then whatever's alive is gonna be made of cells. Um, all cells have a cell membrane. A cell membrane is different from a cell wall, so make sure that you remember that difference. All cells have a cell membrane that's kind of like a squishy little water balloon around the outside of the cell. That's important because it keeps the things that are inside the cell inside the cell, and the things that are not supposed to be inside the cell are outside of the cell, right? So it's a little squishy membrane around every single cell. All cells have a cell membrane. It's also called a phospholipid bilayer or a plasma membrane. And there are two types of cells. So like when in doubt, you got a 50-50 shot. There are only two different types of cells. So let's look at the similarities and differences between those two different types of cells. First, we have prokaryotic cells. Secondly, we have eukaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic literally means before nucleus. So these cells arrived, evolved before the nucleus came about, okay? So I like to remember prokaryotic cells, the important things about them by remembering P, B, no, no. And I'm looking right here. So you might think, what does that even mean? Okay, the P stands for prokaryotic. That's the kind of cell we're dealing with. The B tells you, what is it? It's a bacteria. So these are bacterial cells. The first no right here is no nucleus. Okay, so these cells do not have a nucleus because remember prokaryotic means before nucleus, which means they do not have a nucleus. And if you look at this little image right here, there is no big ball in the middle, there is no nucleus. So the DNA is just kind of floating around as you can see in the image in the middle of the cell, kind of like a little bowl of spaghetti, okay? They also have no membrane bound organelles. That's the second no, P, B, no, no. This is the second no, no membrane bound organelles. This means that they have ribosomes. Sure, they are not bound by a membrane, but they do not have any lysosomes. They do not have Golgi bodies. They do not have mitochondria. They do not have chloroplasts. They have very limited structures on the inside. Okay, so yes, they have ribosomes. Ribosomes are important to make proteins, but that's not it. Like they have cytoplasm, absolutely. Okay, but we're talking about internal structures, ribosomes, yes, DNA, absolutely. But they don't have all of that extra stuff that you would find in a eukaryotic cell. So again, PB, no, no. Prokaryotic, that tells you the type of cell. The B is bacteria, that tells you what are we actually talking about? What organism? So prokaryotes are always bacteria. They have no nucleus and no membrane bound organelles, like lysosomes, Golgi bodies, etc. Again, all cells have a cell membrane. So these absolutely have a cell membrane. They also have a cell wall, okay? So the cell wall in a prokaryote or in a bacteria is typically made of something called peptidoglycan, and that is different from cell walls of other organisms. That's part of what makes bacteria unique. These are very, very small cells because they don't have all those extra internal structures. And some of them are pathogenic and that means that they can make you sick. But some of them, many of them are actually super beneficial. If you've ever seen on your yogurt, it says that it contains bacteria and you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna make me sick. Actually, it's there to help improve some of your gut health. It probably contains lactobacillus acidophilus, which, which aids in digestion, which is great. So that's a little bit about prokaryotic cells. This is just a basic review. Prokaryotic before nucleus, PB, no, no. Prokaryotic bacteria, no nucleus, no membrane bound organelles. Those are the main points that you can remember. And of course, they do have a cell membrane, all cells do, and they do have a cell wall. They are very small cells. Some of them are pathogenic, which can hurt you, and some of them are beneficial. Lots of them are beneficial. Now, the second type of cell is called a eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic cell. And I like to think about it as you are made of eukaryotic cells. You are an animal. Plants and animals is mainly what we're talking about here, 
Okay. So these cells have a true nucleus. Eukaryotic literally means like true kernel. So that is a true nucleus. And you can see those dark purple spots here in the middle. Those are your nuclei in each cell. So it has a defined nucleus and the DNA is found inside of the nucleus and that's for protection. Okay. We're talking about plant cells and we're talking about animal cells here mainly. So plant cells are going to be more rectangular. They have a little bit more structure. They have this very large central vacuole that allows them to fill up with water and stand upright. Like if you have a droopy flower, add some water, right? You also have these little green structures here. These are the chloroplasts. This is where photosynthesis happens. So this little one here is a plant cell. And this round one over here is an animal cell. That's what you, eukaryotic, you are made of animal cells. Okay. Um, so plant cells have cell walls. Their cell walls are made of cellulose, which is a little bit different from our prokaryotic friends. Um, you also have things like fungi that would fall under this category, and they have cell walls that are made of chitin. Okay. Uh, we also have membrane-bound organelles here for our eukaryotic cells. They do have membrane-bound organelles. They have lysosomes. They have Golgi bodies, mitochondria, the nucleus. There are a whole lot of internal structures. It is very compartmentalized inside of the cell. You can just look at the images and see that these images have a whole lot of stuff going on in the middle, whereas our prokaryotic friend over here did not have a whole lot of stuff going on. This is all DNA and cytoplasm mostly. Okay, over here we have a lot of little tiny internal structures and they are all bound by membranes. That's why they are called membrane bound organelles. They are just little parts of the cell that have specific functions. So all eukaryotic cells are much larger and more complex. You can see, obviously the size isn't to scale, but you can see that they are much more complex because of all these little internal structures. There's a lot going on. These are larger, more complex cells. And of course they have a cell membrane because every single cell has a cell membrane, okay? Even cells that have cell walls have cell membranes. But remember that animal cells only have a cell membrane. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Plant cells do have cell walls, that's okay. That's just an extra structure for them. And um, some fungi do have cell walls, again, made of chitin. Okay, so those are the main similarities and or differences here. So these are like characteristics of all cells. These are characteristics of our prokaryotic cells. These are characteristics of our eukaryotic cells. And you might ask, what about viruses? Viruses are not cells. They are not alive. They are smaller than cells. Okay, so if cells are the smallest level of organization of life, well, a virus is smaller than that, so they are not considered alive. They, um, the cell is also the basic unit of life. This little virus little guy, they do not have all of the structures that it takes to be considered alive. They do not have all of the characteristics that it takes to be considered alive. The cell is the smallest structure that has all of the characteristics and all of the structures to be considered a living thing or a living organism. Okay, so I hope that that helps refresh your memory a little bit about cells. I'll see you in the next one.